right, we are wide awake. We had amazing sleep and um, we are going up another little mountain. Shouldn't be too long, 1.7 up, 1.5 down. And uh, Chap decided to take the road walk because there is a chance of some snow and ice still. Um, and we are gonna take the PCT up this way. What's really cool is that you know, they have that road walk option. It is actually supposed to be equal amount of mileage um, for those that don't want to go up out in Mount Baden-Powell and like all this other stuff. Um, so he's gonna take a little bit of that road walk, which we're gonna be on later on anyway, because there is a closure due to frogs. But for now, we're going up the PCT. And the three amigos are off. By the way, actually our little family, Tramily, the four of us, we have a trail name called Full House. Because every time we get into a shuttle or anywhere, a tent side, we're always filling everything up. So also plus one, just in case you're wondering, he's contemplating whether to stop his through hike or not. So he's still in Wrightwood, and we'll find out more soon. <clears throat> and then, nice blow down already. How you doing? Holy, wow, okay. Mount Williamson has about Appalachian Trail kind of grading up. So pretty uh, steep climb. I mean, not like super steep, but not usual PCT, uh, nice gradual. It's a little bit more steep. We have 0.6 left. Uh, my calves are tight. Wow. And then there is Fireball. Where is she? Right there. Now she's behind the tree. Let's see if she's gonna come. Ooh, there she is! There she is! Look at those clouds. Wow. Okay, I'm not there yet, but I know now what this mountain reminds me of. It reminds me of Kelly Knob in Georgia. It's literally the same thing. It's the same kind of uh, grade of uphill and also never ending. So yeah, this is, this is the, P the PCT's Kelly Knob, Mount Williamson. And we're not even going all the way up. The PCT doesn't go to the peak. It goes almost and then it goes around it. Uh, that's the thing on the PCT a lot. The PCT doesn't go often to peaks versus on the AT, uh, we often go to peaks. So another example of a comparison. I'm going downhill already because it was so windy up there. I was gonna wait for the other two, but I was going have some hypothermia up there if I was going to stay there. So far, I don't see any snow yet. It's supposed to be here at around 388. Uh, I'm think I'm, I think I'm at 387. There's like a little tiny snow patch right there. So we'll see. Uh, yeah. How you doing? Oh my gosh. Well, there it is. Woohoo! So I decided to put my micro spikes on because, you know, it's the last bit of snow until the Sierra and, you know, don't want to risk anything. And it looks, it looks like it's going to be a bit steep. Well, that was short lived. How was that? Fireball. Easy. Easy. That was like, you, we didn't need any micro spikes and we didn't need an ice axe if the snow is solid. That was like sad.
All right, so I wanted to talk about why um, I like to stick to the PC team. Um, yeah, I think we mentioned it in Chaps Live. There was a couple that asked me in particular why we're always taking the hard way, which is the PCT. A lot of people have options to take uh, side, sideways or skip sections and all those things. And <clears throat> I, you know, it honestly, whatever they want to do in order for them to feel safe, that's very important. If they feel Fuller Ridge is too dangerous for them, then by all means, you know, skip it or try to, you know, walk around it. I don't know. But um, same thing with Mount Bain and Powell. I definitely think that it was something that could uh, harm some people for sure. It was definitely dangerous. But a couple asked me like, why I, I always choose the hard part and I choose it because what for me, for me, what is the point of through hiking if you always skip the easy parts? Um, for me, whenever I do something difficult, I learn from it as well as it makes me way more confident. So if you followed my journey of the PCT so far, you know that on the first day of Mount Jacinto, Mount San Jacinto, uh, we practiced like wearing our ice axe, you know, having our ice axe as well as our micro spikes on and I, I still slipped. And I felt very, very self-conscious. I did not feel confident whatsoever. And so that is why we didn't do that, the PCT part of the Apache peak, the side part. We actually went over the peak, which is cool too. So we have continuous footsteps. And that was only like a few hundred yards. It wasn't even anything close to mileage, but I felt very self-conscious and I felt like felt very not confident. And so I didn't like that feeling. And so once I did Fuller Ridge, I felt pretty confident. You know, I hadn't practiced any self-arresting or anything like that. But when I did yesterday, Mount Baden Powell, I didn't mention it. I think I just put like some notes in there. But when I glissaded down one of those crazy downhills, I practiced my self-arresting so many times. And I feel incredibly confident now. Like, and I wouldn't have felt that if I had skipped it. And again, I'm not saying it's it's not okay to skip it when you feel it's dangerous. I mean, that's what Chap is doing today. You know, he didn't want to deal with the snow. He felt it's too dangerous for him. And I respect that. For me personally, I learn a lot from it. So that's it. But um, some people, they say that we are encouraging people to do dangerous things by telling them they need to not skip. That's not what we say. What we say is look at it for yourself. Think, see if it is dangerous. If it's dangerous, don't do it. If it's not dangerous for you, you know, do it because it makes you more confident. I think like if, you know, fear mongering is, is rampant on this, on this trail. Um, about some little things like this right here. This was nothing. Um, and honestly, skipping this wouldn't make any sense because honestly, there was nothing to it. But I understand Fuller Ridge and I do understand Mount Baden Powell. I do understand if people skip it. Um, but what's really great about the PCT is that it gives you alternate routes, which allows you still to have continuous footpath, which is really what's most important for me in this trail. I know I'm probably not going to be able to hike the entire PCT, um, but I am planning to have a continuous footpath. So, so whether that's alternate routes and things like that. Anyway, that's four minutes of me talking. Sometimes uh, I kind of go and talk about it, but I want to talk about it because we really don't want people to do anything that they feel is dangerous for themselves. But, you know, I do think it is helpful to sometimes do things that scare you as long as you're safe. Because then you feel more confident. And that's what I do. I feel very, very, very confident about my uh, self-arresting abilities right now. All done with that part. Back on PCT and chops right up there. So we are still on the PCT. Uh, there is going to be a section called, it's not called anything, it's just a four mile closure of the PCT because of some endangered species of frogs. So we're just walking up to that point 
and then we will take some road walking to go around. I don't know if it's just road walk or if there's like a blue blaze that goes through the road walk. I think there's multiple options. Like you can just do a road walk or you take like another uh, trail and then road walk. So we'll see. Cool, so we are at the spot where we can't get back on the PCT because of them, them frogs right there. So we're gonna road walk until we can get back on the PCT. All right, so we've got the sign, yellow-legged frog, an endangered species. So it's closed until further notice, so for a while. And a little pit stop so everybody can get their bodily functions in order. What are these? They're just randomly right here. This road right here though is open. Only a few people drive though. These are your trekking poles right there, at least this one. I got an obby. I guess I need new trekking poles. Your stuff's falling apart. Yeah, it is. She's bringing up a good point. I was looking at my tent and I realized I probably will have to get a new tent at some point on this through hike. I mean, it's still fine. I can patch up some of those really, really tiny holes, but maybe, I don't know. That's a, that's a big cost right there. But I'll, I'll see how long I can make it last. I'll do it. Like, let's all put one on. <laughs> you would think, but yeah. it's, been, it's been since I've lived out here. Interesting. And, uh, so this guy right there just said that the frog closure has been there for 20 years because the frog won't die. Well, isn't the whole point behind this to save them frogs? Why would we want them frogs to die? I guess for the, us to be able to open up the trail. Look at also the Silver Moccasin Trail. Very cool. River crossing! Crossing the river. And another one, and another one, and another one. Had some nice lunch at the Camp Glenwood. I tried to go in there, the door is locked. What's the point? I guess maybe people rent it out or something.
So while it's not too windy yet, which I know it will be soon, I have decided to hike a little bit longer than the others. Not a little bit, probably a lot longer. Um, one of the, I mean, there's so many reasons. Reason number one is my sleeping pad is not in a good condition. And I'm honestly, I'm not, like I don't, I try to take things as they come, but with my sleeping pad, I'm a little bit worried it's gonna pop like completely anytime. Uh, it's supposed to be pretty cold for the next few nights. And the longer I am on trail, uh, the more chances of it popping and me having to sleep at uh, pretty cold temperatures on the ground. And so I know my sleeping pad is going to arrive in Aqua Dolce. Actually today, I'm not going to try to make it there today. Obviously not. I'm actually about three to four days out. Um, so that's reason number one. Reason number two is I want to hike more miles. Today, uh, like it's only about 3 p.m. right now and I'm almost at the camp spot we decided we were gonna go and I just you know I need to get it out of my system like one of the things that happens to me is I often need to like hike be alone get it out of my system and be happy to see other people again that is the introvert inside of me I've been around these other three people wonderful people for 30 some days and I think I need a little bit of space um, I love them. I, I'm not like, ultimately that's, that's one of another reason. So wanting to hike more miles, get it out of my system, being a little bit alone for, for, you know, two, three days. I think that's something that I'm, I'm kind of yearning right now. And so I decided that that's what I'm going to do today. Now, Chap was going to hike with me a little bit more. However, uh, there is supposed to be pretty cold night tonight and there is a wind chill of something, I don't know, 10 degrees. It's supposed to be pretty cold. And uh, he doesn't want to go up on the mountain that is about to happen. And he doesn't think he wants to make it over the mountain, which is what I'm planning to do. I'm planning to uh, uh, make it over the mountain. So uh, that's why I kind of made the decision to just go ahead and do that. Hike to Agua Dolce for the next three some days and then just uh, wait for them there. I think it'll take them four days or three and a half days. And I think I can get there in about two and a half, three days. I have no idea, probably three days. I'm planning three days. I mean, I'm gonna do a lot of miles today that will kind of reduce how many miles I need to do over the next two days. But if I just like the long hiking, I'm probably just gonna do that so that I can get that out of my system. Uh, Chap doesn't want to hike a lot of miles because he doesn't want to go to the skip to the Sierra too soon And I totally respect that and I totally understand that and I totally agree with that <laughs> But I can't control how I feel inside That I want to hike more That I want to probably be a little bit alone and uh, You know, I think that those are the things and and uh, You know, I'm planning to you know be with them again in two three days it's just right now i kind of like i guess i just need to seek space <laughs> it has nothing to do with them it has all to do with me and so i just kind of want to share that with you guys um so yeah i mean i had a chat with chap and i told him i was gonna go over the mountain he said he was gonna not be able to do that and so i said okay well uh i'll do that um, is there any, are there any other reasons besides? It's mostly my sleeping pad. Also, I lost a water bottle, so I want to get another water bottle. I also didn't bring as much food as we need to do the miles that they want to do. We planned four and a half days and we took a whole half day just to get to the bottom of Baden-Powell, uh, Baden-Powell. And then, you know, it's just, I think, I think I would be able to make it with my food, but don't know if I have enough. So anywho, I'm gonna listen to this later on to see if you can hear everything, cause you know, it is windy. If not, I'll re-record it. But that's the status. And now I'm gonna be in roadrunner mode. Yeah.
Okay, I'm on top. 6,770 feet. I guess now it's gonna go back down and I think this is the windy side. So I hope you can hear me. But I'm going downhill. This is the golden hour, honestly, it's so beautiful. Wow. So that completes my day. I was going to not do a um, video, but the lady next to me is talking on her phone really loud. So I guess I don't, I don't think it's sleeping time yet. Um, had a really good day. I don't know exactly how much I hiked. I think it's around 31 point something miles. I feel really good. I do miss my tramway already. Um, but I feel really good about having hiked a little bit more today. And um, kind of having my space for a little bit. But uh, I look forward to seeing them. That's for sure. Okay. Have a good night.